Mike, how you doing? I'm good, thank you, Brad. Yeah? Yeah, nice Lo to be out today. Isn't it? Beautiful day to be out. Lovely. Yeah. What do you think of the area? Really, really special. Yeah. I think um, walking through this morning, um, seeing the variety of trees, even the holly, which I know you're not, not a fan of. Yeah. Um, but I can imagine special without the conditions with with some nice conditions here it'd be a, a, a lovely spot to shoot so yeah thank you for sharing it to me no you're more than welcome thanks for coming on so we're going to have a fascinating conversation mm -hmm. judging by what we've spoken about on the way through it's lovely to be around trees isn't it absolutely um i think we spoke about earlier how the trees have a power to to heal yeah um they have a power that you know to us we talked about them sharing nutrients you know it depends on who you read as to whether that's accurate or not but they are special to be around and they do help in terms of our mental health our well-being which yeah. is really really important yeah yeah how have they helped you would you say um i think just being out in nature um has helped massively with me um talking about what we were talking about earlier um i think the ability that nature has to to help with your own mental health to make you more self-aware yeah. has been really, really important to me, certainly over the last few years. Um, so, yeah. How, how so? What, what kind of things? Um, I think just just to be the stillness that you feel in the woodlands, even yeah. though, as we men mentioned earlier, they're, they're not really still at all. No. Um, there's always life going on whether it be above the ground or yeah. under the ground in the, in the treetops. But I think the solitude and, and seeking that out, actually, yeah. um, it is important to, to have that solitude in my life anyway. Yeah. I think that's important for you as well. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, so, yeah, definitely that too yeah. um, in relation to that. Yeah, so, so photography and, and nature has kind of helped you with your own level of uh, getting to know yourself, mm. yeah, at your kind of core at your mm, I think so I think um, <clears throat> I believe that it's helped massively certainly over the last few years as a, as a, as a almost like to help me cope with things that have been going on in my life yeah um, so over the last few years I have struggled with my mental health uh, and the woodlands in particular and photography is is definitely enabled me to have a, a self-awareness of who I am yeah um, a lot more and I think I mentioned earlier um, that when, um, as I was growing up, um, my mum died and it wasn't until my mid thirties that, that I became aware of what impact that had had on my life really. Yeah. Um, so woodlands certainly have helped me in times of seeking out that solitude allowing me to have those quiet moments mm. allowing me to have time with my thoughts reflecting on what happened in my life yeah um, but also obviously reflecting on and, and taking in what's around you as well and internalizing those which mm. helps you which helps you with your inner demons and your inner battles so sure. yeah, definitely so it's been a period of process processing things that were perhaps buried yeah i think so yeah um in fast-paced life you don't always get time mm. to to process things no. you know, you've got a million and one things to do on a day-to-day -day basis and without those quiet periods i'm not sure that i would have even realized what mm. was going on in my head mm. um so the woodlands definitely and being out in nature has helped me to to internalize become more self-aware mm. and just generally it's it's how you as we mentioned before i, I, I think this is still I think it's always going to be a journey for me i don't think i'm going to have it's never going to be resolved as such sure. but it certainly helps in the healing process sure it's being out in nature no matter where no matter what the weather yeah um not always motivated to do so as we spoke about earlier mm. as well but i never when i do get myself out i never regret it you know to be yeah. out to be out is a blessing i yeah, think yeah. we need to take time to appreciate that and yeah. realize that anytime you're out witnessing nature witnessing the sen senses we talked about earlier as well the sights the sounds the smells yeah. taking that all in that is a massive part of healing mm. and well-being and just part of i can't imagine a life now where i don't have that my sure. life would be a lot less 
unfulfilled yeah. had nature and photography not being a part of it. I mean, I've spoken before about this or certainly posted about this before, whereas mm. for me, photography is almost, um, it's, it's, it's massively important, don't yeah. get me wrong, but photography is, is part of the process. Sure, yeah. Um, being out in nature is more important yeah. than the photography. The photo if, you know, photography is brilliant, you know, it gives me a lot of joy, gives me a lot of personal satisfaction. Yeah. But it's actually being out there yeah. and being in tune or trying to be in tune with nature that's yeah. more important for me yeah. than actually the photography. The photography is secondary almost to it yeah. uh, while still being really important. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting because I resonate deeply with that in that the process of becoming attuned to the natural world. We spoke about it before, didn't we, where it kind of puts you out of the idea of just me, you know, like, and, and in that place, everything can become so complex and so big and almost un unmanageable and unbearable mm. sometimes, but actually the very process of just w taking a walk outside and learning to silence that inner voice and realize that actually we're a part of mm. something much bigger. It can be, yeah, uh, it's freedom, isn't it? It's a freedom and a belonging. I think so, yeah. And um, <coughs> you mentioned walking up here about how um, sometimes we feel like we're imposters mm. in this landscape mm. and how it takes time to really become attuned to it and you end up while feeling a little bit of imposter mm. at the start the more reflection you do the more in tune you try and be with nature the more you become part of nature so we spoke about um uh, how time flies in, in the woods sure. doesn't it where where's where you know six seven hours can literally go by yeah. in a blink of an eye uh, and that that is that is special when those moments happen that is really special and it, it shows how you become part of the environment yeah whereas just being you know the imposter that we spoke yeah, about earlier. yeah so yeah the almost the 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 sense of you know this this is foreign to me it's maybe you know like um you, you feel almost at times like you don't belong because we almost have this division between these two worlds where we have this natural world which is our escape from our real world mm. society that perhaps we've become too identified with from time to time yeah. and then it takes for us to come back repeatedly sometimes mm. because we both had a conversation before where we felt like we have days where we go out into nature and it's almost like we're confused as to why we're there yeah. and like like this feeling of this doesn't feel right but it actually takes maybe a process of weeks or months months even to in our case years of repeatedly going outdoors to feel that sense of something more yeah and i think i think i think that's important as well i mean <laughs> we spoke earlier about how um i think you're the same with this how you you might drive to a location with all the intentions of going into nature yeah based on what we just spoke about how, how important it is and then yeah. then literally not even bothering to get out of the car yeah you know, having, <laughs> having a flask of coffee and then yeah. just driving home and you know there's there's no real, real reason for that other than you know you, you've got to feel it you've got to be in in sort of you know your mind has got to be in the frame of mind where you want to enjoy it and if you pull up to a place and you think I haven't got a good feeling today. There's nothing wrong with no. just taking time out and saying, do you know what, today, this isn't for me. I don't feel like it today. I'm going to, because it could be something that's going on in, in your personal life or anything like yeah, that. Absolutely, if, yeah, absolutely. If you're not going to be in tune with nature and, you know, what's the point? In what's there, the point? You might as well park it up for yeah, the yeah. day. And then when you're feeling a little bit better, come back out and enjoy it because if yeah. you're not enjoying it there's something wrong really yeah. um so. it, it's just like life isn't it in the sense that you can't force anything mm. love you know relationships you can't force them to if they're not there they're not they're not there and actually mm. the very trying to force it almost pushes further away and if we're trying to force creativity it really reflects in the work that we're producing so from my perspective and I don't know where you stand on this but I actually like to use those periods of maybe I call it disconnection mm. um, I actually like to use those moments and I mentioned we talked about the episode of um, the creative block that I, that I talked about yeah. the other day where actually you can use those for deeper periods of introspection and reflection and maybe even like a pivot in what you're doing and I don't know if you 
think the same way with periods like that? I think so, and I think that's, you use the word process a lot today, and that is part of the process. I think there's nothing wrong with having a creative block, and I suppose when those periods do come, you, you've got to embrace them, I think. You've got to take them on board. And, yeah. you know, just as long as you are not letting that experience drag on for, for, for a certain amount, you know, a long period yes. of time, because that might suggest there's, there's something else there. Sure. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of taking time out for yourself, for your, for your own well-being, to yeah. work on other, other ventures, to work on other areas yeah. of your life, it's absolutely fine to do that. Yeah. And I think you know, part of the process is, is, is coming back to it and, and learning from it and just getting back out there when you feel that you're able to do so there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong when it comes naturally absolutely. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, i'm a firm believer in that but then there is also the argument there where perhaps we we do need to force things sometimes mm. as well otherwise perhaps we become too stale and too stagnant so yeah i think so because we, we spoke earlier didn't we about um procrastination yes. and how for me it has been an issue yeah um and even just then setting up the cameras, whereas I, I'm learning video editing at the moment, you know, just do it. Don't learn it and then mm. think, all oh, right, I've learned it now. Yes. I'm going to now put that into action. Yes. Maybe put it into action as you're, as you're doing it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it has been an issue for me in the past yeah. massively. Yeah. I feel like we, we mentioned before about books as well, and I feel like books can be... Um, almost a distraction mm. we, we mentioned about knowledge you, you have the tattoo on your arm mm. right knowledge is power yeah knowledge is power yeah. and and I, I resonate deeply with that but knowledge can also come from the doing mm. you know we can certainly read too much and I've been guilty of this where I've maybe used books as more of an maybe I'm avoiding or you know hiding but actually in the process of doing and similar in, in the work that we produce out in the natural world that is you can only do that from from the doing and mm. that's where we learn the greatest lessons right yeah. In, yeah. The, in the in the process Another. yeah no i agree um reading while i'm not doing much of it at the moment as we yeah. spoke about earlier it's it's always been important to me because learning <clears throat> keeps us alive i think yeah you know, anything that you pick up that's, yeah. that's new yeah just a, it could be a little fact so like we talked about yeah. before how you know, when you look up into the night sky and you see all the stars and you just start to wonder about your place in it all and, yeah. and how we've come to be and how long it's taken the light to, to actually get here from that distant yeah. star. I mean, learning anything is, is, is a privilege, I think. And you know, for me, it's that zest for learning which helps to keep us alive, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's really important. I, I do Agreed. believe that knowledge is, you know, and it is, it is really important for me moving forwards and it always has been I think just to keep I don't think we should ever get to a stage in our lives where we yeah. feel oh I know that now yeah, or, yeah. Oh, that's done let's yeah you know, I think we can always there's something to learn in everything yeah you, you might have been doing a job for 30 years yeah and yeah that obviously you built up a lot of experience in yeah it, but there's still something to learn absolutely I, I feel like the very point at which we believe that we know is the point at which we should give up mm. whatever it is that we're doing mm. and you know we were talking a little bit about religion before i yeah. i question anyone who who knows you know that this is true mm. because that from my perspective limits the questions that i ask mm. and everything begins and ends with a question you know i think and, and i'm curious to pick your brains on this one um does the this thirst for knowledge kind of put you back in touch with that child you mentioned your four or five year old self who was very stimulated by your granddad's questions and education on knowledge is that what you're chasing that feeling of being a child again um i'm not sure on that one brad to be honest i, mean, I do think we've all gotten in a child um and it might resonate back to those times that i spent and you know, i obviously learned from my granddad yeah you know, he used to write in all, all of my books that he used to buy me as a child you know knowledge is strength and, yeah yeah you know, he, he was right in, in terms yeah. of that knowledge is power yeah um and i think what he taught me still resonates um in terms of it going back to my inner child i'm not sh i'm not too sure about that one to be honest but um it's certainly something that is important to me in terms of you know that that thirst for knowledge find yeah. out new thing it could be anything it could be just yeah, one, yeah. one thing a day that you think yeah. oh i didn't know that That's yeah, yeah. it could be fact yeah it could be statistic 
could be anything really yeah. just as long as you keep keeping on because yeah. i think if you if you don't if you if you lose that mm. your life is is less um, agreed if you if you've lost yeah. that th sort of thirst for yeah. knowledge like you said just you know it's time to give up if you've stopped thinking that yeah um and that yeah i think it is important it could be yeah anything you know, new photography technique yeah yeah you know, just a fact about our place and where yeah. we are the earth yeah it's it is something really important yeah. i feel like it encourages us to always kind of remain conscious in day-to-day -day life if we're always looking for those moments that i didn't know that teach mm. me some more it forces us to you know be animated be aware whereas mm. some, you know sometimes you can walk around a little bit fixated on your own issues or you know things you've got going on and you, you're then unaware and you aren't animated you aren't curious and alive hey, curious yeah, absolutely i think that's the key word really and um, when i'm having those periods where perhaps my motivation isn't there yeah um and you know those times where i've driven to a location and thought sod it i'm gonna go back home what usually brings me back is the curiousness of life you know those times where you're feeling a bit down um i might just say to myself right i'm gonna put a documentary on could be anything you know netflix or yeah. youtube and just because you know, it could be something for me for me it would be documentaries about space and the universe because i've really always been interested in that and it, yeah. it still to this day blows my mind i think yeah. even your best sort of uh, astro uh, guys in the world, it, it, it blows their minds every day as yeah. well. You, we, we, we can never learn too much about our place yeah. and where we are. Yeah. And you know. what is it for you? Why, why space? Why, why that? I don't. Curiosity? I think. I think it, it does go back to the child. Actually, um, I used to enjoy and I still enjoy looking up at the night sky. Um, oddly enough, never, never. Well, very, very little astrophotography I've, I've done. Um, never had a desire to do it. But for me, um, I think it's just, I think it's just how the whole, um, that just the, how huge the place yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, our, and our, I think it's, it's, it's thinking about how vast the universe is and how, how the fact it would take us, I don't know, God knows how many years at, at the speed of light to get to our yeah. nearest star. I think it's four years traveling at the speed right. of light to get to our nearest right. star. So that, that, <laughs> that just blows my mind. It absolutely blows my mind. Yeah. And, and then when we start, and that, that's just our nearest star, when you start thinking about distant galaxies, mm. you know, how far... The Hubble and the James Webb Space Telescope yeah. are now telling us that we've existed for <clears> and stuff like that. And it, that curiosity, it mm. makes me cu more curious about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then as a kid, I always, always used to look up at the night sky in amazement. Uh, I used to have a little Collins gem yeah. pocketbook with all the constellations in. I used to spend hours upon hours, but even before I had a telescope just thinking right what's that constellation up there yeah consulting my little pocketbook yeah and then i did get a telescope um only a small thing i can't remember three or three inch reflector or something like that but that that was just like mm. again as, as a young kid looking up at the moon yeah and seeing the craters on the moon and just thinking wow you know I, this first time i've ever looked at a crater on the moon and then finding saturn yeah and then looking at the rings of saturn it, it, yeah. just, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier about just just being curious i think yeah, yeah. these these are other planets in our solar system mm. and how far they are away the unknown yeah the unknown and then thinking about yeah, you know, we are literally when we look down at the floor and see a load of ants mm. That, that's us yeah you know, we're slightly bigger than ants we're obviously <laughs> on, on a on the yeah. bigger scale we are we are just you know Dust. Dust, essentially. <laughs> yeah, space dust. But it's significant at the same time. Hmm. Yeah, because, a, so. yeah, a human can do so much with their life, right? Yeah. But I love that concept of we are nothing and at the same time, we are we are everything yeah, as well. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so do you think that there might be a, an urge to create uh, potentially photographs of space, of the night sky at some point in the future, if you're following more of that curiosity? Um, Probably not, if I was honest. Uh, I don't think it would give me the same thing yeah. that the woodlands mm. give to me. Um, when I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm absolutely amazed by some of the astrophotography which, yeah. which we see. Um, but how 
detail that work is to actually put into i mean i, I that's what I, I admire it greatly mm. because of the the, the 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 hours that people put into stacking x, yeah. x amount of files and, and to resolve a, you know, mm. a, a planet or, or whatever yeah, yeah. it's just for me it would, i don't think it would give me the same satisfaction yeah yeah um and it doesn't take away from from my love of it um but I can't see myself doing it because I don't think it would give me what I yeah, need for yeah. photography. So would it perhaps take away from the maybe more expressive and perhaps more emotional side of photography, which is, seems to be based upon the images of yours and the conversations that we have, that seems to be what is drawing you to create work is the more, what am I trying to say? Yeah, I think it, f creating for me, certainly in Woodlands, is is as we've already said it's more than just the photograph it's the it's the experience mm. it's it's being out here uh breathing in the atmosphere becoming in tune <clears throat> with the environment um and seeking that that time where you can get get, get into your own head i suppose is, is a better way of saying it um any time thoughts come in, I think we've all experienced this, and this this is possibly why there have been times where I've not bothered. You know, I've, I've got to a location, not feeling it today, yeah. drove off because I just knew yeah. that I wasn't going to be able to switch off today yeah, from yeah. whatever it was that was going through my head at the time. Yeah. So for me, when you're in the woods and you start taking it all in, mm. it you do get to a stage where I can park. Yes. Those other thoughts eventually. It might take it might take 10, 15 minutes, it might take an hour yeah. until my mind stops wondering. Yeah. But when my mind does stop wondering, it does feel meditative to yeah. be in the woodlands. I don't think I might be wrong, but I don't think there'll be many other genres of photography mm. where I'd I'd have the same. And that's that that's ultimately I think why I gravitated towards yeah, woodlands. Yeah. Because I start like a lot of um, photographers, I didn't start in the woods. Mm. I started in, in in the Peak District yeah. on, on the ridge lines, um, you know, and I wasn't necessarily. I might have just shot shot trees, but I yeah. wouldn't have said I was class uh, myself class as, a, myself as woodland a woodland photographer. photographer. Whereas uh, over the years, that has been where I've gravitated towards. Yeah, definitely for for the reasons that we we just mentioned there. So, so why do you think you can access that place inside of yourself in a woodland, but potentially not in other? other locations and other genres um i think thinking back to when i used to uh, be in the peaks i don't know it might have been on kerber edge stanage edge sometimes it felt like you were chasing the light mm. so to speak whereas there's not that necessity mm. in the woods and you know I, i'm not, my approach in woodlands is quite simple you know I don't necessarily go out thinking, um, right, here's a tree, mm. when's going to be the best time that the light's going to be hitting it from, from the side. Mm. I, I, don't, I don't generally do that much, yeah, but yeah. I, know, I know some people do and that, yeah. that's absolutely fine, but I'm more keeping things simple. Mm. And that I think for me, that's why woodland appeals as well as the stillness, as well as the solitude, as well as yeah. the isolation. Yeah, yeah. Um, and allowing, I don't think my, my mind's, my mind in the woodlands is is where it needs to be. Mm. I think. If I was doing another genre, mm. if I was you know, capturing a sunset, I don't think my mind, I think I'd be trying to think about too many things at yeah, once. Sure. I think we spoke earlier about how, uh, for me, um, I can't comp I, I can't it's too, if, if i'm if i'm trying to think about more than one thing at a time it's just not going to work for me yeah um typical bloke <laughs> <laughs> but um i think it's i, I like doing things thorough mm. but it takes me a long time to do things mm. uh, and that might be part you know going back to what we spoke about earlier that might just be me putting barriers up it mm. might be procrastination but for me, woodland feels where I'm more in tune with with what I'm doing. Basically, yeah, I feel sure. comfortable with it. Yeah, yeah. It may be in some other genres of photography that I've tried in the past. I didn't really yeah. feel entirely comfortable. And yeah. that does come with experience. You know, it has been woodland's been what I've yeah. been shooting now for quite a few years. Mm. Um, I feel like it comes with experience and knowledge of self as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And I think it was almost like when I started shooting woodland, I knew. 
Um, yeah. I knew that it was going to be for me, um, for the reasons just mentioned, really. I, yeah. you know, I, I, I think I felt a certain peace mm. in the woodlands. It's beautiful. It's be yeah. yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. Where, where, you know, whereas in the past, doing other genres, I didn't. I, it was great to be out. Don't get me wrong. Seeing, yeah. seeing a sunset, yeah, yeah. wonderful. Uh, but it didn't feel like Mike in in here, deeper, it, deeper self. It didn't feel truth. No, it didn't feel. I feel like that's a place that I'm not going to say everybody should, but I feel like that's a place where I know I, know I want to to be at, mm. and you know, it's certainly the bliss that I don't know if you're familiar with Joseph Campbell, no. mythologist. No. I think he was around in the 60s, 70s. He did a lot of work around, um, well, kind of psychology based upon myths, and mm. he had this saying. I can't remember it exactly, but it's in in short, it's that following your bliss is the, the place for true happiness mm -hmm. for truth and as artists that's the place where i believe we need to be mm -hmm. in wherever that is because it brings out our most authentic and honest and truthful and maybe yeah. it allows us to tell the stories that are more deeper and more meaningful to us mm -hmm. and therefore the people who need to connect will be able to connect on the outside world right yeah absolutely i think um it, it it feeds into um creativity as well you know if you're not doing something if you're feeling if you're not feeling it you're unlikely to get your best creative thoughts um yeah work out of it whereas i do feel most creative in the woodlands mm. uh, and i do feel like going back to the point you just made i do feel where for me it's like a a solitary bliss i suppose you could say i do like my own company i'm happy to shoot with other people but i do like to be um just just alone yeah sometimes uh, i don't think there's anything wrong with that i agree um, i felt know. more alone with crowds of people than i felt by myself mm -hmm. many times i was reflecting mm -hmm. on that thought yesterday mm -hmm. i don't think there's anything wrong at all and i believe that mm, a lot of people could benefit from spending a little bit more time alone obviously too extreme one end is mm -hmm. probably a little bit detrimental mm -hmm. and negative but definitely feel like that you know we need that and i'm working with some children in a school at the moment mm -hmm. so it's funny that you're a teacher mm -hmm. um and that um, i'm kind of trying to encourage them to spend more time by themselves to see what they can find inside of them that isn't let me look at your work so i can see what to do mm -hmm. you know that we've all got our own story and narrative yeah and i, I suppose um you might have experienced this in what what what, what how old are the kids they're six and seven year six two and seven yeah. so you know They've, they've at that age hopefully they've still got a lot of enthusiasm sure yeah <laughs> a lot of uh, curiosity yeah and i suppose you mentioned we mentioned earlier didn't we maybe maybe there's a part of that inner child that we still from time to time want to reconnect with because um, one of the things that i can remember from working with with younger children and some of the older kids as well in fairness um is they are you know despite the society we're living in today where there's a lot of emphasis on behavior in schools and social media causing so much uh, issues with with kids mental health ultimately kids I, th I think at their core and humans they still want to learn they still want to be curious about things and i think as an adult sometimes we can be guilty of, of of losing that that sort of inner curiosity that inner child sure there's nothing wrong with with reconnecting with that from time to time and being aware of it really i think that um that kind of inner child work is is deeply important and to reconnect with that part of ourselves that is expressive because you mentioned before potentially uh, uh, your you know the barriers that you've placed up in terms of procrastination or maybe a bit of self-doubt in mm. work. Mm. Um, those barriers are kind of things that have been imposed on us through life. I think at some of these key, maybe key periods in, yeah. our, in our formation. And I think the natural world, I think creativity has a way of um, bringing us back to that self and allow us to remove or helps us to kind of remove those, mm. those barriers inside of inside of us i don't know where you stand on 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 that you work with younger people is it kind of something that you you see in 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 these children um yeah I, I, as, as i said i think generally even though i think not everyone's aware that they're curious not everyone's necessarily aware that they are 
interested by yeah. learning or new knowledge. But I think, I think for most people, that is innate. I think yeah. for, you know, for a lot of people, even though they might not be, be aware of it, I mean, kids today spend hours and hours on TikTok, yeah. or whatever else rubbish that they're watching. But when, what I found is when you bring them back to being a kid, mm. They they won't admit it. Yeah, <laughs> they'll probably enjoy that more. Yeah. So you know, we, kids who will spend hours on a phone, mm. hours on a computer, playing Fortnite or whatever, and they're not really being a kid. Mm. But if you take them out for a bike ride, or if you take them to play football, yeah, in the park or wherever, yeah, and you or you see them playing outside with the mates, climbing a tree or whatever, yeah, yeah, they are embracing. Yeah. That their inner child and, and yeah. that, that's and i think they, they, they might not be aware of it yet yeah but when i think when they look back in the future they won't necessarily remember the, mm. uh, the hours that they spent on tiktok yeah but they will remember oh do you remember when we climbed that tree and yeah, uh, yeah. such and such fell out yeah or you do all, those all the stupid things you do as a kid yeah and i think for me that's 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 the most important mm. really yeah. and is that the same thing you're remembering when you or you're feeling when you're in these places you you know immersed and you're you know lost in i could yeah i, I mean i can remember exactly how i think that you you you, you best well not necessarily your best work even yeah. but the, the best your best experiences in the woodlands or wherever whatever genre you're doing is where you you can remember it i suppose it's like we all go through those periods of our lives don't we where you can remember exactly where you were at a certain yeah. time uh, exactly who you were with, yeah. how you were feeling, and, yeah. and they, those don't come around too often no. those times. And some of them are good times, some of them are bad times. Yeah. Um, but I suppose it's similar to that in the woodlands to a large degree. Um, you know, you, you, I, for some, some, some of the, my best experience in the woodlands, I can remember exactly where I was, what I was thinking, what I was feeling, uh, what smells I was yeah. taking in, what, well, how my senses were awakened by what, and I can, I can still doesn't happen often yeah um and i think that's a good thing because i thought we spoke earlier didn't we about if some if things happen all the time it loses its impact yeah. <laughs> um but yeah i mean absolutely you know, th those times are few and far between mm. and that's a good thing yeah you, you embrace them when they're here yeah but don't long for them when they're not because they will come back goes um, down to acceptance doesn't it i think so and it's yeah. the whole process that you've been through judging by the things we spoke about before it's kind of been a process of accepting and and coming to terms with lots of things that you know perhaps you were resisting at one point and blocking yeah. out perhaps blocking out yeah just not even being aware of them uh, in a lot of respects yeah um so um spoke about this earlier how uh, my mum and dad split up when i was young um one of my f earliest memories was just standing between my mum and dad yeah and just saying stop arguing stop arguing. yeah yeah um ended up myself and my brother spending time with, with my live with my dad yeah um very rarely saw my mum mm. uh, not not through through any fault of anyone mm. so i just chose um to to not really engage with my mum i think i you know subconsciously blamed her for for, for what happened mm. um and then um unfortunately my mum died when i was 15. Mm. Uh, and I, there was a lot of, you know, I, I, I blocked it out, like, like you said, I blocked that out for yeah. years and years and years. Yeah. Absolutely. You said 20 years? 20, 20 plus years, uh, just completely not, not dealing, didn't deal with, didn't deal with the grief, didn't deal, deal with the trauma whatsoever. Um, I'd still, you know, don't get me wrong, I did obviously think about it over those years, yeah. but I didn't, um, I didn't conceptualise what, 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 what it meant. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't until my sort of mid 30s i think it was that i started to be aware mm. of what was in my subconscious mm. was coming into my into the forefront of my sure. mind and it was then that i started to sort of um not not deal with it because um, i don't think i think i think i said i don't think i'll ever deal fully. with what's happened mm. fully um but just being aware of it, I think, mm. was a breakthrough in itself. Mm. You know, I'd repressed, I'd repressed this for years and years and years, and then all of a sudden, the acceptance, the right, that there is an issue. Sure. This is the issue. Now you can start to not deal with it fully, but at least think about it mm. and think about how that's affected you and how how best you can move forward. So, mm. 
so you um, not not accept it because that's the wrong word really mm. but certainly you know, I think the awareness of it for me was massive was there a, a, um, maybe a an ability to forgive then once you'd faced it is that is that perhaps more accurate than in terms of forgiving myself yes. yeah um yeah because I, yeah I, I did i did partly um feel a lot of guilt yeah um certainly that i didn't see my mum maybe mm. as much as i should mm. um the fact that and I, I think for me it was really difficult to and i think i've said this to a few people before but not many it would it I might be completely wrong about this, but as I didn't know my mum that well, I never got to hear her side yeah. of things. Um, and I've, I've said, rightly or wrongly, that if I had known her well, maybe it would have been easier to deal with because mm. I would have had her side sure. of the story. Yeah. So then I think for me, it is, it is a lot of my grief mm. that came from the trauma was just the... The not knowing, unknown. the unknown, mm. uh, and I think what's scary, talking about fear earlier as well, yeah. um, is I'll, ne I'll never know now, sure, uh, and that's really hard to deal with. Um, so for me, but but, and this is this is crucial. This is so much better than where I was when I was mid thirties mm. because I, I didn't even, I wasn't aware of any of this. I was, I had no idea at all what why I felt like it because mm. I, 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 you know, growing up I had um, still do uh, anxiety panic attacks not all linked to the death of my mum because I was experiencing before then mm. um, but it started it helped me start to make links between what had happened in my childhood sure and how I was feeling sure as a 35 year old guy um, and you know I, I, you know, as I said earlier, uh, Brad, I, I enjoyed my childhood. Mm. You know, I don't think I, I, there was nothing to say that I didn't enjoy my childhood, yeah. but it was a very different childhood than perhaps if my mum and dad had stayed together. Mm. And obviously if my um, mum hadn't died, mm. it would have been uh, different. But I, yeah, I have fond, memory, fond, fond memories of growing up, fond memories of, of being a kid. Yeah, you know, yeah. That, that thirst for, for, for yeah, yeah, absolutely, that yeah. curiosity we yeah. spoke about earlier. It sounded like there was a lot of beauty there as well. Yeah, there yeah. was, absolutely, yeah. And I, I did have love. Mm. Um, a father's love's different than a mother's absolutely, love. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and maybe, that has affected me um well there's no maybe about it i don't think uh but yeah i mean yeah i still still think back to my childhood with yeah. fond memories really yeah um, i posed the question before because i want to kind of tie this the, your experience here in with perhaps how your affinity with nature has developed and i kind of brought something up before about the role of mother nature as the perhaps the, mm. that mother that you lost and didn't mm. have that mm. same kind of love that you look outside for in terms of nature but actually it, it comes from within, from within. and yeah. I definitely feel like nature is the kind of portal to things that are within our, us anyway mm. but perhaps it gives us this like a you know an unlocking of our own inner innate wisdom yeah. that perhaps definitely mm. I say perhaps I, I think it certainly no, I, played I, a part in role I in do your, I do agree um, I'd never yeah you know, as I said to you a while ago I'd never thought of it like that I knew that nature had a real powerful impact on yeah. me in terms of healing and I knew <clears throat> that it was important for me in terms of uh, all sorts of things to do with my thoughts, my mm. mind, resetting my mind, switching off, you, you name it. Yeah. Um, but I'd never thought of it as in terms of, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the mother nature aspect. Yeah, the, the feminine, the yeah, divine the feminine, feminine yeah, I, the yeah. energy, whatever exists. But there is, there is yeah. something to that, definitely. I do, I do agree with that. Um, I wouldn't class myself as a massive spiritual person. Um, but I, I do think there is prob probably something in that. Mm. Um, so it's great that you uh, brought that up, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like we've both learned from each other today, mm -hmm. which has been what it's all about. And yeah, hopefully absolutely. the audience can learn a bit from this. Well. Yeah. So thank you for being so open with uh, That's things okay. because That's fine. it kind of enables this two-way conversation. Well, it, it helps. It helps the wider. This is what it's all about, really, yeah. is kind of helping the wider mm. world with our own personal and experiences I think sometimes in nature. Maybe that was one of my problems that I didn't talk about. Hmm. things 
I was quite guarded as a kid. Yeah. I enjoyed my childhood, yeah. as I've, I've said repeatedly now, but I, yeah. I was quite guarded. I didn't really, still don't, um, show my emotions. Um, but any time that we're struggling with our well-being mm. or mental health, get on the phone doesn't matter you know, speak to a friend speak to a helpline yeah yeah it, it all helps yeah i know so that's not natural to a lot of people mm. uh but it certainly helped me yeah uh, in, in a number of respects yeah so. it's definitely not natural vulnerability opening up parts of ourselves is not a natural thing mm. to do especially not for us mm. blokes we're, mm. we're men aren't we we just get on with it yeah. yeah and you know it's not always the way to the way forwards no. No. um i wanted to to take this back just a few steps because you mentioned about the mic of mid thirties. Uh, how, how, how have you changed? How is it, you know, how has nature kind of helped you? What's um, the key differences between him and the him of you now? I think I appreciate nature more now. Um, I've always enjoyed it, I think, um, but certainly through, I think the realization at, at maybe 34, 35, um, that there were uh, issues that I needed to not not address necessarily, but you know, become become aware of. Yeah, nature has helped in in a number of ways in in coping with that. Mm. So as a coping mechanism, um, look at it. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, yeah absolutely fantastic. Yeah. How, how can you not look at trees, listen to the sounds, and not, yeah. not feel a certain sense of appreciate a, sure. a, a grand appreciation yeah. for it i think that that appreciation is has only deepened mm. um i've always loved nature but i don't think i appreciated it 35 sure. as much as yeah. i do now because it has helped on that journey of, of self-discovery yeah self-fulfillment yeah um so yeah i would say that it's uh, me at 35 i would have had um an appreciation and respect for the sure, outdoors yeah. Uh, but certainly not the appreciation that I now have, mm -hmm. knowing what it's done sure. to help me sure. heal and yeah. um, accept me for who I am as mm. well. I think there was a lot of self-doubt mm. in my um, 20s, 30s. That yeah, yeah. That wasn't... Um, wasn't aware of whereas yeah. uh, so yeah it's, it's helped yeah i can't i can't i can't think of a <laughs> i had to put it into words a yeah. life yeah i can't oh. think well i can't think of a life without without nature really it would be yeah. a lot less fulfilled i would not have um realized as much about myself mm. as i have come to realize i think yeah i want to uh, spoken to a lot of people mm. who i've got to know yourself yeah and a lot of other people yeah uh, who who have similar uh, yeah. experiences yeah. and a similar appreciation for for for, for where we are mm. really and what we what we do and um so yeah it's yeah been really important yeah i definitely feel like uh you know humanity in general as a whole has kind of separated itself from nature mm. and i feel like it's probably the root of many of our issues mm. is the fact that we don't belong we belong in a city, you know, around all of the stimulation and industry. And that's where we feel like we belong. I, I was eating some berries last summer, actually. I was walking through Welshpool and I was eating some berries that I just picked off a tree and uh, off a bush, not a tree, but yeah. Uh, and and some, somebody that I knew from school looked at me and he goes, oh God, you really are a man of nature, aren't you, Brad? Like I was like this foreign, <laughs> you know, this unknown specimen walking through the town. And I, and I was kind of like, we all are. It's just that you've forgotten mm. what you are mm. and I'm reconnecting with it, but you know, I'm a hippie and I'm whatever else, but I don't know what's happened. <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, I can always remember picking berries yeah. <laughs> off trees as, yeah. as a kid. And that was one of the joys of childhood, yeah. you know, having a few blackberries or a few cherries off yeah. of a cherry tree. They taste so much better than that garbage mm. we buy oh, in a supermarket, yeah. don't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to give a good old wash before you even yeah, put yeah. it anywhere near your mouth. But, um, yeah. you know, um, well, nature gives, doesn't it? And I suppose, you know, it gives so much, mm. including uh, that joy of, that, that simple joy of picking fruit off a tree and, and eating it, mm. just as long as it's not the bottom layer where the dogs yeah. are. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, it's um, I, I can't understand why your friend uh, yeah. would uh, be anti, I was bewildered. anti Barry. Yeah, yeah, I was bewildered. I didn't even challenge him. I just <laughs> I've learned to just accept people and just be like, all right, yeah, yeah, I'm not have, I'm not even gonna we have to accept. I'm not even gonna bother. Really but I, I you know I'll quickly go and write something then or you know do do my bit because a lot of people don't want the you know, mm. challenge, which is fine. Mm. So we talked a lot about, uh, more so about nature today. What about the, the actual creative process for you? The actual taking of the photographs, the reflection on these photographs, how, how important a role has that played for you? And, and you know, tell us a little bit more about that. Um, it is important. Um, I think we've already mentioned, haven't we, how the process is more important. Um, but the actual creativity, I, th I think as well, we, we as, as photographers, we, we change as well. Um, and, and the more you, time you spend in nature, the more in tune your, your eye might be to certain scenes. Yeah. And I think when I first started Woodland, for example, there's no, there's, I would have just walked past a lot of what I now spend a lot of time uh, engaging with mm. uh, it might be the smaller scenes. I, f I find I am drawn more to, to small. I don't mean necessarily intimate scenes, yeah. but just smaller scenes within yeah. the woodlands. Whereas in the past, I probably would have uh, looked at oh, that's a nice tree. Mm. It's characterful. Yeah, let's uh, let's shoot that yeah. because it's a it's a nice character. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I find myself now, as time's gone on, being drawn more to to um, smaller like vig vignettes in the, in the landscape. Yeah. I suppose you could say. Um, so yeah, in terms of in terms of how my photography in woodland has changed, I, I would say that that is, I think you just get an eye, mm. um, and I'm, I'm still learning. I, yeah. I'm sure right. in another yeah. three, four years time, my eye might be very different than what than what it is now. I might spot seeing because there's always something to shoot. Yeah. Um, no, no matter what the weather, and I think we do sometimes put unnecessary barriers sure. up. No, I'm not going out today. It's raining or oh, it's horrible wind today. But you. Know, any conditions, mm. um, safety, of, of safety. So you don't want to go into a woodland if it's <laughs> gale force winds and you yeah, yeah. risk a tree blowing on you. But um, yeah, there's always something to shoot in the woods. I mm. think that's another reason why I like woodland photography. Um, bit of rain for me, bring, bring it on. You know, it's, it, yeah. you know, rain creates its own set of atmospheres, layers. Um, so yeah, I think um, there's always something to shoot. Yeah. Um, always something to learn. And that's for me, uh, why woodland and the creative practice in woodlands is so important. But yeah. I think you know you probably picked up that for me the process is is the biggest part of, yeah, of, get the, that. of the story. Being out, yeah, 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 telling the story of nature as a whole than yeah. than actually yeah. creating a um, a photograph. Yeah, for, for, photography is. I think I've said it a number of times. Photography is. It's a bonus, mm. I think. If I come away with images that I'm proud of, yeah. then that's a bonus. Yeah. If I don't, then I've still spent a day amongst yeah, yeah. trees, yeah. which is um, a joy in itself. So, so what is it that what is it that you're trying to create then? Um, think just th I think things that I'm personally satisfied with. Mm. You know, um, if I'm if I'm in a woodland and I'm trying to yeah, I will look. You know, th 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 I will look for the things that we all look for. I will look for light, I will look for textures, I will look for depth, separation, yeah. I will check my edges. Um, so all those technical aspects, that's all compositional aspects I am looking for as well. But I think it boils down to, it does, it's, it's personal satisfaction. The personal yeah. satisfaction could be, right, I've, I've really enjoyed today. I want to create an image which brings me back to that point. And I can, you know, like we were talking about before, how you can remember exactly where you were. So yeah. I think that you know, those days are few and far between. But I think if if I can look at a photograph and I can think, yeah, I was I was really happy creating that, and I, I, could, I was really in tune with the environment when I created that. I think and that that personal satisfaction is there. Mm. I think for me, that's the most important thing. Um, and then if uh, if I do a print of it, yeah and it looks brilliant in print or if other people like it then then great if other people don't like it that that's absolutely fine as well I think. yeah what, what determines success for you then as a personal satisfaction yeah um, if i'm happy with something 
then I've got, I think I, I don't think I've possibly always felt like this but mm. um, we talked earlier about the perils of you know, social media has its strengths but it also has its perils I yeah. think now um, I think if I'm enjoying an image if I'm personally satisfied with an image uh, that's the most important thing yeah um, I'm happy to take constructive criticism if it's asked for but I don't very often ask for it because it's, it's it, you, I think ultimately it's it's down to you. you know, if you're happy with an image yeah. and how you've created that image, yeah. it doesn't matter one jot, one yeah. arrow to what anyone else thinks. Yeah. Um, if other people like it, great. If other people think, I don't know what he's trying to do there, right. that's fine. That's yeah. absolutely yeah. fine as well. Yeah. There's no right or wrong it's in no art, right is there, in photography? No. It's all, I mean, it's all subjective. And sure. Some people might see that as a get-out clause. Uh, but it, it is subjective. You know, woodland photography in particular has never... It's a lot more popular now than, than it, than it yeah. was, uh, understandably, given COVID and, and so on and so forth. And I think a lot of people have, have, have come to realise, actually, yeah, there's a lot to gain from being in the woodland. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but it's never going to be as popular as you know your, your big vistas, your sunrises, your sunsets. No, it's, it, I can't see shot of the Ogwen Valley or yeah, yeah. It's, exactly. It's, it's never going. I know those shots are popular and they're popular for a reason. They are, and they're yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah. absolutely beautiful. But it, it you, I think if I was taking a photo of the Ogwen Valley, you know, the fantastic sunrise, sunset, whatever, I, I wouldn't get the same satisfaction. Mm. As if I was shooting that tree yeah. <laughs> right there, for example. Yeah, yeah, and telling a story. Um, and telling that story uh, of what's important for me. I, it almost feel like I we, we used the word imposter a few times today. If I went and shot a scene, and I'm not saying that I never will. Yeah. Um, because obviously, if I'm going up into the hills, I will take some vistas. Yeah. But I don't still don't think that I'll get as much personal sat satisfaction from doing that as I would in the woodlands. Yeah. Um, so I would feel more of an imposter yeah. in the Ogwen Valley sh shooting Trevan yeah. than if I was here shooting that, that fantastic yeah. looking birch, which yeah. is just off camera. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot to be said, isn't there, for, for that, for following that inner voice and that guide that's, that's inside that leads us to these places. Because, you know, we are, it is leading us, some, something is leading us mm. to these places for a reason, isn't mm. it? And I think in the conversation that we're having now, maybe the, maybe this is the reason mm. <laughs> that we can share wisdom. I know that certainly is for me. Anyway, I don't know about yourself, but I feel like there's um, there's a le there's an element of wisdom that comes from outside that is mm, I feel like a conduit for for that. Mm. You know, opening myself to this natural world as a means to share that with the world. Yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily see myself as an ambassador for the outdoors. I mean, if people look at my work and they feel inspired to go out and take pictures yeah, of trees yeah. then brilliant um but that that isn't my main aim of creating photographs i don't think uh it'd be you know like anything if people look at your work and they want to purchase a print that that's yeah. that's fantastic if people look at my work and they think oh i really want to go and, and see that tree and look at that tree that's great as well you know you are maybe opening doors for people who mm. who don't spend enough time outdoors uh, who would benefit from it both mentally physically um but that's that's not me you know that's not my main reason for mm. creating i don't think um you know for me it's to do with all the other things we discussed today sure um which i'm not going to repeat yeah <laughs> <laughs> time today but um you know, that's that's my views on yeah. that. I think. How long have you been practicing photography now? Well, um, I suppose um, I've always had a camera in my hand. I guess going yeah. back to you know the curious nature of childhood. I had I can't remember the name of it. It was one of those thin things. Someone will tell me <laughs> what it's called. But uh, it was film camera. Um, used to go around taking pictures on that. Quite enjoyed it as a kid. Um, when I was round about. Um, 18 or 19 I think it was maybe a little bit older 20, 20 I think about 2021 20, yeah um, went down to Cornwall uh, on holiday and I was pretty in awe of the landscape down there and one of the first things I did when I got back was I brought um, a film camera right I'd, I'd say it was very haphazard uh, my experiences with a film camera I used to go to get I, I used to send them off to get get them developed and things like that but I suppose my real 
uh, seriousness with um, photography was round about 2017. Um, I did have a, a, a digital camera before that, I think yeah. around about 2012, I picked up an, a Nikon uh, D3100, th uh, I think it right. was, 3100. Yeah. Uh, and I did used to experiment. I used to do sort of star trails and, oh, yeah. and uh, motorway lights and stuff yeah, like yeah. that, but nothing. <laughs> it was just, it was just, it's all part of playing. the process. Playing, sure. yeah, playing, yeah. yeah, I suppose, you know, I think we all go through that. Yeah stage yeah. you know, photography where we say oh that looks good I'm yeah gonna, yeah that. and that's part of the learning process yeah. as well there's nothing wrong with that yeah um i suppose 2017 was when i first brought um i, I call it a proper camera even though there's no such thing as it you can you can shoot brilliant image on any camera yeah. um and it was round about then that i took it a bit more seriously um still wasn't going out that much um but that's my photography journey. I suppose Woodland in particular, mm. probably around about 2019, I think. Yeah. Uh, so maybe five, five or six years ago now, I believe that I first started getting getting into Woodland. And yeah. For the reasons we've, we, we've talked about. Um, so yeah, that, that's my sort of, um, I've always enjoyed having a camera basically. Yeah, yeah. I suppose it's part of that curious nature i suppose we're all curious aren't we that's ultimately why we we do what we do now yeah um, i feel like it's why we do anything isn't mm. it? it comes from stems from some curiosity mm. what can i do with that you know mm. yeah mm. so do you remember your first venture into a woodland with a camera um i should do shouldn't i <laughs> uh, yeah I, I i it was probably thinking about it it was probably going to Padley Gorge. Oh yeah, in the Peak District. I, I, I probably had been to other woodlands yeah. before this, but the first time I really walked into woodland mm. and thought, "Wow, yeah, do you know what? This is just like something out of a fairy tale." Yeah, it was. It was Padley it Gorge. It's beautiful, isn't it's it? It's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I still feel I, I've been there countless times. Yeah, um, there's a couple of little areas near to Padley Gorge as well that I. I not so frequently now, but I still go back to a little bit quieter, a little bit off off grid more so than, yeah. than the actual gorge itself. Um, but the, the first time, it was like we were talking about earlier with the um, the sense of um, or the sense of amazement and curiosity, and um, was was Padley Gorge. Um, just like something out of I mean, there's no conditions to feel i can i can still remember it the, yeah. the very first time i walked into that woodland there's no conditions they didn't, they didn't need it yeah there's fantastic old oaks yeah you know, it's the shape of those the, oaks the, isn't it the millstones you know, yeah, the, the, yeah. the babbling brook that yeah, runs yeah. through the middle um the characters it was just it was just, just beautiful it's, it's one of those places that is in yeah it needs protecting really doesn't yeah, it it's absolutely. just absolutely and while, while I, I don't don't go back. I, sometimes I'll um, park a little bit outside um, Padley Gorge itself, and then I'll I'll walk through it uh, yeah. almost, almost as an afterthought, really, because I, I tend to go to slightly quieter places, yeah. a little bit off the grid that are near there. Um, but even now, I mean, I can still still remember the first time that I went there, and that really sort of. And obviously, obviously I'd seen some of the other photographers' images from from there. So I think that was the first time that I've really sort of been into the woodlands and thought, wow, you know, this, this, this is for me yeah. from that experience, yeah. really. Yeah, there is something quite magical about uh, woodland in particular that you don't quite get anywhere else. It's the, the light that dances between the trees and it always seems to be changing because it's casting new shadows and it's, you know, forming new shapes and mm -hmm. identities the mist and there's mist floating around the valleys and you know it's just really magical experience with all of those sounds you can probably hear some of the birds in our mm. audio now it's just it brings you home doesn't it yeah i think as well i think it's um i mean all, all the senses are, are on full alert sure. when you get in tune you mentioned before how for me the sound of water is quite mm. important now obviously not all woodlands have have water running through them which yeah. is which is fine but i do find that when I can get close to a stream that just the sound of water I find quite relaxing yeah uh, and, and helps me get into that state yeah uh, I spoke about earlier where you are in tune with mm. with what's going on around you and um, you, you sort of it helps get rid of those protruding thoughts yeah. which might just flicker into your head from time yeah. to time apparently it helps us access our emotional uh, lives as well water, water. 
Oh. So I've heard. Mm -hmm. well, actually, I, can, I, I can see that. I can, I can completely resonate that. with that. Yeah, yeah. It just so happens that a few of my favourite photographs have been taken beside water, which mm. is interesting. Mm. But I liken the woodland to a womb. Yeah. So when yeah. you've got the stream in there, maybe that's the kind of water yeah. element of the womb as well. I yeah. don't know. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> I can see it. I can yeah, see it yeah. again. I've not thought of it before, yeah. but there's a couple of points in, in today. Yeah, oh, this, where this you... head's pretty wacky. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure there's probably a lot <laughs> of thoughts wacky, going on yeah, in here. Pretty, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where do you see maybe your um, photography moving in, in the future, Mike? Have you got kind of um, um, any projects or plans in mind? Uh, yeah, yeah a, few, a few little things. Um, I do want to get round to stop procrastinating and get yeah. a, a little book of some description um, released just with um, some of the work that I'm, I'm most proud of, that I've got yeah. the most satisfaction from. Um, for, for me, it's quite a lot of winter images which would feature in there, but also yeah, it'd be a mixture from all the different seasons, I think. And uh, yeah. speaking about what we were speaking about before, for me, that's why woodland is so, so special as well. Um, you could look at a landscape, for example, and it wouldn't change that much between the seasons. Um, yeah, you'd have different sunrise and sunsets, time, stuff like yeah. that. But I suppose woodland, it changes. Yeah immensely mm. over the seasons new, new pathways will open yeah. as the as the yeah. bracken dies down and i think that's what i, what I love about it as well and the, the like you say the conditions because mm. they don't come around that often mm. when those conditions do come around you do get more satisfaction from, yeah. from them um i suppose the transient nature of the conditions in woodlands is in, is important to me as well mm. um other other little things going on um I'm hoping to do uh, a video yeah. <laughs> at some point this year. Just one, just the one, maybe more if I, if I get around to it. But uh, one of my goals for 2024 yeah. was just to, to put myself out there, mm. you know, do a video. Part, part of it, I've been thinking about it for years. This yeah. isn't anything new. <laughs> Again, it's that barrier, that yeah. procrastination. Thinking and doing. Yeah. Thinking of doing it, thinking of doing it, you know, learning about it. And one of the things I've learned from yourself today, Brad, is just just do it. You, know, mm. you, don't, you don't have to be an expert in photo, uh, video editing to do it. Just learn as you go along. Um, so yeah, um, a video uh, again. That's part of the creative process as well. I think it's um, using a different skill set uh, in a, in some respects than for, than for sure. yes, you're actually using the same you're using a camera. Yeah, um, but. You, do, you are using different skill set for that, so I do, I do want to challenge myself with that this year. Yeah. Uh, and if it isn't this year, sometime in the future. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, those are a couple of little things that um, I've got uh, to yeah. think about moving forwards, yeah. and hopefully they will come to fruition at some yeah. point. In you the... never know where they're going to lead either, do you? <laughs> well, That's the thing. No, no. I want to go back to, you, you mentioned about winter. Why, why winter for you, Mike? Um, I think winter for me, uh, in terms of photography, yeah. um, it's a funny one, it's a bit of a paradox for me because I used to really enjoy winter as a, as a kid, um, you know, a bit of snowfall, yeah. the frost, <laughs> uh, the bleak conditions. I was always drawn to the bleak as a kid, I was, into, I was quite an in, introvert, still am quite an introvert. I was into a lot of sort of uh, music where, which had imagery and lyrics about the dark, yeah. the mythical, um, so black metal, death metal, heavy metal music. Um, yeah. So I was drawn to the dark side, I suppose you could say. Um, growing up, now I'm a bit older, I've, I've struggled in the winter. Mm. Um, I find it difficult now on a mental uh, level to um, have my mind where, where it needs to be. A bit of yeah. sun, sunlight like today yeah. it makes you feel a hundred yeah, times yeah. better. I still enjoy winter. I think some of my best photography has come uh, from the winter months, but I do find it harder to motivate myself. Mm. Um, in the summer, I can easily, well, not, not, not easily, I put a few yeah. strong coffees to get going, but <laughs> I, can, I can get up at 2, 2 a.m. Yeah. I can drive for three hours to get to where I need to go to. And yes, I'll be tired the next day, but I, I can do it in the summer. Yeah. Whereas in the winter, there's no, there's no requirement to do that, obviously because of the, the sunrise time and sunset. But I don't think I could motivate myself mm. to do it in the winter. I feel more motivated, even though probably some of my best, or certainly the work that I'm most satisfied with yeah. has come in the winter months. Yeah. Um, I'm probably more motivated to create images in the spring and summer. Mm 
uh, and autumn to a degree. Um, yeah. But I, I suppose it's it's to do with my my mental state at sure. various points in the year. Yeah, really intriguing that you you mentioned some of your favourite images are those wintry ones, and your 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 uh, I guess most well known one would be your the one that was was it commended in landscape uh, photographer of the yeah, year yeah it was a uh, highly commended 2021 landscape photographer of the year it's um an image that i'm i'm proud yeah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't class it as uh, um my favorite image right uh, it's not the image that i've got the most personal satisfaction from creating but in terms of um <coughs> recognition that would be the one uh that, yeah. that, that stands yeah. above the crowd yeah um and it was one of those mornings where I think I, at the time when I po I can remember exactly how I was feeling. Uh, I can remember exactly um, my, my thought processes behind the composition. You know, it was just a fantastic morning to be out. Mm. I think at the time I said, do you know what? Um, anyone stood in this position with any camera could have created that image that day. And there was, there was, X amount of other photographers mm. there that morning that were also producing some mm. some stunning images, um, and I think while that isn't the image I'm most personally satisfied yeah. with, that's definitely the one that that, that has got me yeah. a bit of recognition. I suppose it has yeah. sold a few a few <laughs> it's yeah. a few prints yeah. uh, over the last few years. Um, but yeah, I mean it is a bit of a paradox, like you say, that my some of my most um, some of the images that I am more personally satisfied with have, have come from that, though that that season that mm. for me I struggle in, um, and maybe there is something to be said for um, you know, struggling mentally and and yeah, f not forcing but creating some of the work that yeah. you're you're most satisfied with. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a. Uh, it was good to get in the book. It yeah, was, yeah, it was of course. Good to get in that book, yeah. and I, I think at the time I, I thought to myself, "Look, um, uh, I'm always going to have that book, um, and hopefully, even after I've long gone, hmm. someone might look back on that book in the future and think, oh, that's a nice winter.' Yeah, sure. Looks like Narnia. So even yeah, though, yeah, because I haven't got kids myself, you see. So um, um, for for me. Uh, my legacy would yeah. be passed through my children, but maybe if I can just, if, if someone looks at that book in 90 years time, yeah. thinks, oh, that's a nice winter scene. Then sure. I've still got that, there's still a little bit of me yeah, sure. and my family that are still, yeah, still yeah. there, so to speak. Yeah, it's really intriguing that you mentioned that winter was your uh, season as a child, and then it's a winter image that you mentioned you, mm. you prefer your winter images in, in many ways and it's also a winter image that's resonated deeply with obviously somebody mm. who, who's judged that book mm. quite a fascinating concept that again drawing back to that kind of inner child connection as well that that's the image now that you know represents in in somebody's eyes you as a human perhaps that's also your child seeing that 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 world again yeah i mean certainly that that particular morning it was uh, it, you know, um, anyone of, of, of similar age to me will remember the line, the witch and the wardrobe. Yeah. It was on, I think it was on BBC back in the late eighties. Uh, obviously it's a popular film series since. Yeah. Um, but that morning was literally like walking into Narnia. Yeah. Um, and you can almost imagine, um, you can almost picture a wardrobe being in that woodland and walking at the back of the wardrobe and literally transporting yourself to that sort of area. Yeah. Um, it was magical conditions and you know, I, I for one am pleased that those conditions come infrequently yeah. because you do get more satisfaction yeah. when, when they do yeah. come around um because if if you had those conditions every week <laughs> we'd be bored looking you, you, for something you, else you'd yeah. be happy for a few weeks and then you'd be like oh, minute, <laughs> yeah. this is too easy now we need something else goes to back to being a human doesn't yeah. it never satisfied with too much of a yeah. good thing yeah. right but I th woodland that's woodland all over i, I yeah. say you um that those those sorts of more transient conditions mm. they do give you more satisfaction when they come around sure but I think what I love about woodland is that you can, you can create images, compelling images, images that you're uh, personally satisfied with, which is the most important for me. Uh, you can create them in any conditions, yeah. whether it be raining, uh, even on blue sky days. I think I posted a few weeks ago about how mm. 
you, you just have to change approach mm. your approach a little bit it might be compositionally yeah it might be working with the light and where that's coming from because there's always going to be pockets of a woodland where mm. uh, okay it's a blue sky day and the light is harsh but there will be more sheltered areas away from mm. that light or or having uh, the light in uh, as, as a side light that's mm. just picking out some branches or some uh, lichen on on the, yeah. on the on the tree branches so there's always i think that's why another reason that that it's always going to be where i produce and again i'm not going to say i'm i'm never going to shoot other scenes because of course i will but um i think in terms of my personal satisfaction it's always going to be from the woodlands I yeah think. i think i've definitely been uh, guilty myself of limiting how and where and when I can be creative mm. and maybe not looking at a woodland as you know like on a day like today I I wouldn't I wouldn't take like you know I wouldn't create I wouldn't take a photograph mm. just completely restricted myself to probably not even walking out the doors with my camera mm. on a day like today whereas you know you mentioned that there's always the chance there's and there is there's always the chance I think but it boils down to um <coughs> it boils down to motivation um because you in your in your mind's eye you might think that uh, it's, it's not going to be it's not going to be uh, a fantastic foggy image with lots of separation yeah. and you, know, you you might talk yourself out of it but I, still, yeah, I think one of the things i've learned is that you the more time even even if you don't yeah, yeah that's absolutely fine you know, even if you come out and don't take an image or you might take one image you, you you're still learning uh, I think that's that's what I appreciate about woodland as well, and you can the fact that you can take your time to do mm. it. Um, you're not you're not sort of uh, limited by the sunlight or anything like that. It's yeah. Any time that you're out with your camera is 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 a is a benefit. Yeah. Um, because you'll be learning things mm. for when the conditions are, are maybe a little bit better, or just keeping your eye in. Yeah. With with other things, I mean, just as we're talking now, I'm just looking at this uh, this tree stump yeah. <laughs> behind us, and I'm thinking. There's possibly an image in that somewhere. Some kind of abstract, abstract there, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, I think there is always um, something to learn. And we're l learning about ourselves mm. by getting out too, yeah. which is the key. I think Absolutely, and yeah. something that both of us uh, philosophically are in alignment with. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Mike, I think we'll call it a day for yeah. the for this episode. Thank you yeah, for talking. coming on. Thank you for opening up as well yeah, and it's for good. It's good sharing your, uh, your story and, yeah. and personal struggles. No, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. It's been good. Good Thank to you. good to talk. Good to get it out there. Yeah. Thanks very much.